What is going on guys? My name is Kenji, welcome back to my channel. Hopefully it's not the first time you're watching one of my videos, but in case it is, I'm a fourth year medical student and biomedical science graduate studying at King's College of London. And before we start this video, I just want to say, if you haven't actually watched the first part of this video, I really do recommend you pause here and go watch the first part. This video won't really make much sense if you haven't watched the first part. The first part actually got over 350,000 views and it's helped thousands of people write better essays. So I do recommend you guys go and check that video out before then coming back to this video and continuing it. The second thing that I want to say is that the first part and the second part of these videos are just a general kind of explanation of how to write essays. But if you want to see an actual breakdown of how I write an essay, use an example that I wrote and break it down step by step. Then my how to write an essay uh, ebook will be linked down in the description below if you want to get yourself a copy to go into more detail on how to write an essay. But if you have watched the first part, uh, welcome to the second part. In the first video, we spoke about the whole kind of process of writing an essay, how to get your research together, and then finally how to put that all together and get ready to actually write an essay. In this video, we're going to be talking talking about once you have all the research and all the kind of literature review work done, what do you actually need to put in your essay and what exactly you need to write in order to get a first class. In this video, I'll be giving you guys an example with a title called The Gut Microbiota in Sickness and in Health. This is actually an essay title that I was given in my undergraduate biomedical science degree. So I think it'll be really good to talk about what exactly I would write if I was given this essay title myself. Don't worry if you're not doing science, you know, you might be studying um, history or English or whatever. All of the general principles of, about how to write an essay, even though it's a scientific topic, will still apply whatever fields you're in. These principles principles don't just apply to how to write an essay. I'd say they also apply to writing up a lab report, a literature review, uh, a case report, literally whatever type of assignment you give in university that involves you having to write up maybe three or 4,000 words. This kind of structure that I'll give you guys in regards to what exactly to write in your essay will hopefully apply to absolutely every bit of coursework that you can be given in university in regards to essay writing. Before we get started, if you could please do me a favor and take two seconds out of your day to give the video a thumbs up. It really helps these videos reach more people. But without further ado, Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so as I said, the example essay title that we'll be using is the gut microbiota in sickness and health. Don't worry about what that actually means. I'll just be using this as an example as to what you guys should write in your essays. So the first thing you guys should start off by writing is your introduction. Once you've gathered all of the kind of research and data, um, as I showed you guys in part one, the first thing that I want you guys to know, which is so, so important. And if there's anything you can absolutely take away from this video, if there's one thing you have to take, it's a funnel method. This funnel method is something that I made up and it's so, so key in getting a first class. What I mean by the funnel method is that whenever you write a paragraph, whenever you write a section in your uh, essay, you want to make sure that you're starting off at the very, very top with a very kind of broad, uh, general explanation of your topic and then as time goes along and as you write more and get to the bottom of your paragraph and the end of your section you want to be right at the bottom of the funnel uh, over here um, being very very specific so in the first part of your introduction you want to start off as i said very broadly and this applies to every single section of your essay whether you're writing the introduction the main body of the conclusion you always want to start off with the funnel method with at the top being very very broad explanation and then as you go along get more specific okay so starting right at the top of the funnel all we want to start off by talking about is what exactly is the gut microbiota. You want to first of all define exactly what you're looking at. No matter what your essay title is, what you want to do in the first paragraph straight away, again being the top of the funnel, define exactly what you're looking at. So I would start off in this example by talking about what is the gut microbiota very broadly and then as time will go along I'll show you guys how we get to the bottom of that funnel. So once we actually define what the gut microbiota is, what we want to then do is talk about why it's important. Someone who is marking your essay will straight away want to know why am I reading this essay? Why am I reading this paper? What is the importance? So the second thing that I'd recommend doing once you explain what your essay title is and what you're actually uh, focusing on, what you want to then do is talk about the importance of your topic. So in this example, what I would say is, you know, the gut microbiota are very, very important because they're, uh, they're the bacteria living in our gut. Um, they consist of uh, millions of cells and they perform uh, this function in our body and helps us live in this sort of way. But straight away, I want to tell the reader exactly why this topic is important. The next thing that we want to do is then talk about their function. So what is their role in the human body? If let's say you're doing finance and marketing and your uh, essay title is on, let's say, the role of YouTubers in influencer marketing, let's say, you want to define the role of YouTubers in the actual influencer market and then move on to talk about more specific things. So in this scientific example, I want to straight away talk about, you know, how do they function and what role do they provide in the human body? And as you can kind of see, we're moving down that funnel. You know, we started off very broadly at start defining what my title is, defining the importance, and now we're saying exactly what role they have in the human body. And that's really, really key. 
The next thing we want to talk about is leading on to the bottom of the funnel, uh, start to address your title. So, you know, define the problem. Um, obviously, in this kind of essay title, there is no uh, problem per se, but you want to define exactly where you'll be going uh, in the rest of the body of the essay. After giving a broad kind of explanation of your topic, of your title, you then want to talk about what you will be talking about for the rest of the entire essay in the body, and then also in conclusion as well. So my advice would be to get to the bottom of the funnel and start to address your actual title of your essay. As I said, my title doesn't actually have a problem, but what I would start doing towards the end of the, of the, um, the kind of paragraph is to just begin talking about a few points of the gut microbiota in health and also in disease, and then that will lead nicely on to the next part of the essay, which will be the main body, where you can expand on the gut microbiota in health and in disease, and then talk about the actual uh, rest of your essay, which will be focused on addressing the title. So now getting towards the bottom of your funnel, the last line in your introduction should then lead on to the next sentence, and be a kind of mini conclusion in itself. The end of every single section of your paragraph should always lead on to the next part paragraph and make it flow very well. And that's really, really important. Sometimes when I'm marking essays uh, and I'm kind of reading essays for my students, a lot of the times I'll have multiple paragraphs in one section and the paragraphs won't really connect. You know, one paragraph is talking about one thing, the next paragraph is talking about something else and, you know, it, and, and kind of carries on like that. What's really, really important to make sure that your essay flows well is as you move down the funnel and as you end a particular paragraph, what you really want to do is make sure that the last line is nicely feeding onto the next paragraph to make sure that all the paragraphs flow very, very well. So your last line here should really be about, as I said, kind of giving a mini conclusion of the gut microbiota uh, and you know maybe one or two sentences in regards to its role in health and in disease. And that will really lead on nicely to the main body where you start talking about the gut microbiota in health and also in disease as well. So that really is the key point I want to make in the introduction. Having this kind of final method system is so, so important. Whenever I mark essays, it's really, really difficult because a lot of the students will have kind of uh, random points in a paragraph that don't really make sense. They'll start off talking very broadly and then they'll get very specific all of a sudden um, in regards to their essay title topic. And then they're going to jump straight back into being very, very broad. And it goes back and forth between being very broad and being very specific. And it's not organized in that logical kind of uh, format of the uh, upside down uh, final method that I'm speaking about. So the two kind of main points here to take away other than you know what actually to write is always use the funnel method, starting off very broad and then getting very specific as you go along and also making sure that the end of every single paragraph leads nicely on to the next section. Uh, and in this part, we're gonna be talking about the actual main body. Okay, so in the introduction, we've used the funnel method. We're given a very nice explanation of uh, the kind of title of what we wanna talk about in the essay. Now we're gonna move on to the main body. And the main body is kind of very difficult for me to explain to you guys because it's gonna vary depending on what type of essay you're writing. But in this example, I then go on to write about what I found in my research and addressing the title. So the main body is where you're gonna add the kind of bulk of your work. Uh, one section in this example is gonna be talking about the gut microbiota in health. And I'll also have another section in the main body about the gut microbiota in disease. So I'm gonna divide my essay in those uh, two parts. And you know, depending on what sort of essay you're writing, you may wanna do the same uh, sort of thing. But again, this will vary depending on what you're writing. So I won't go into detail too much about um, the main body here. If you want more on this, you can go check out my uh, How to Write an Essay book. But the kind of main thing that I wanna tell you guys in regards to your main body uh, is that you should really be looking at adding a at least one or two figures in order to get a first class. Figures are so, so important to getting a first class and you wanna make sure that the figure that you include is actually relevant to your essay and will also add value to it. When I first started off writing essays, I would have random figures of like pictures of Google images, which don't really add much value to my to my actual work. But to get a first class, you have to really have a, a figure that adds value to it. And these are figures that you can get from other papers for when you're doing research on your own. Um, one, th one thing to add is that you can actually even make your own figure. So for example, in this sort of essay title, one thing I could do is to make my own figure and have a kind of spider diagram with uh, one branch uh, being the gut microbiota and health and another branch being a disease and kind of uh, have branches off of these uh, different two topics to then kind of give a very nice broad overview of what I'm gonna be talking about in my actual essay. In university, the people marking your essay would absolutely love the fact that you spend time to actually create your own figure 
rather than copying off another kind of a research paper, if you can actually make your own figure, that will definitely give you a lot of brownie points. And that's something that I always try to do in my own essays. A lot of the time as well, when people are marking your essay, they don't have time to read every single sentence that you've written. But if they see straight away that you have a very good figure that has highlighted all of the main points that they want you to talk about, straight away, they'll be looking at giving you a first already. The second thing that I want to say in your main body is it's really important to have a table sometimes if it's relevant. Tables are a really good way of summarizing many papers when you're doing a literature review, for example. And also if you're doing a lab report as well, it's a great way to summarize your results. So if you can make a table, uh, if you are writing a very big, let's say essay or dissertation, and you want to maybe summarize all of the research papers in your field, having a table is a really, really good way of doing this. Okay, so moving on to the conclusion. The conclusion is a really, really good place where you can get loads of marks. And a lot of the time, some people in the essay writing will think the conclusion is only to just kind of summarize your whole entire paper. That actually is far from the truth. There's so much things you can include in your conclusion and we'll talk about that now. So the first thing is that in your conclusion, the first few lines should really be a brief recap of what you found. So this shouldn't be the bulk of your conclusion, but if you can nicely kind of uh, start the funnel again, your conclusion, again, kind of summarizing everything you've talked about in your essay so far, a bit from the introduction, a bit from the kind of main body, uh, give a little summary on that. That starts off your conclusion at the top of the funnel and will start off your conclusion very nicely. So once you've done that, the next thing you may want to do is after having spoken about what we actually know about the gut microbiota and health and disease, what would be really good is also to start talking about what we don't know about it. So this can be your own sort of opinion, you know, having done your research already, what is not known about the gut microbiota and also what is yet to be discovered? Where are all the gaps? So no matter, you know, what you're writing, whether it's scientific or not scientific, you know, based on your title and having done all your research and writing your main body, you may realize that in some parts of the field, there are actually gaps in it. We don't exactly know uh, what the gut microbiota has a functioning in this part of the body. You may want to say that. But this really is, again, getting to the bottom of the funnel and showing the reader that you haven't just copied and pasted from research papers. You're actually giving your own suggestions as to where the gaps are in the research and how that can be also improved. The next thing you want to talk about is the limitations to the study or the field. So, for example, again, relating back to the gut microbiota, I may say that the limitations on, you know, on our understanding of the gut is maybe we haven't done these experiments maybe we haven't done research in this particular area maybe there's some sort of um limitations on our scientific knowledge or scientific understanding that stop us from fully understanding what the gut microbiota are so limitations are really really important to talk about again if you're in finance or history or whatever i'm sure there's a bunch of limitations that uh, are stopping all the research from moving forward the way that I actually get my limitations for when I write my own essays is one from my own kind of uh, opinion and my own belief after having done all the research. And two is when you actually read loads of papers and do all of your research, every single paper will talk about limitations. They will say what the problem is and uh, what limitations are stopping the research from actually going forward. So you can actually just do some research, read the kind of uh, conclusion of every single paper based on your field and right at the bottom, I can guarantee you almost in pretty much every single essay, they will write out to their own limitations of the experiments they did or on the field in general. So you can kind of steal some of their work and include it on your conclusion as well. The next thing that I really recommend you guys to do, which will really set you apart from the competition is to talk about what the next step is in, re in regard to solving these gaps and limitations that you spoke about. So you may say that the next step actually would be to do this experiment that will allow us to understand uh, you know, what went wrong, or maybe we'll do this clinical trial in order to fill in the gaps that we have so far. Even in my own research, when I do my own research in the labs, there's always something that went wrong or something that limited us from actually um, getting better results and getting to the end of our question. So this is the part where you'll be highlighting uh, exactly what you guys need to do in the future in regard to facing these limitations. If you're in first year or you have no research in, in kind of being in a lab or uh, in research in general, don't worry about that. Again, as I said, if you read papers, they will almost always tell you exactly what needs to be done in order to solve these limitations uh, in the actual field. Okay, moving on from that, the final thing that you guys should really talk about uh, in your conclusion, maybe in the last sentence or two, is what is the future? What I may say in this example is that once we understand um, the gut microbiota by overcoming these limitations, we may be able to change or 
alter the gut microbiota in order to enhance our health and also to eradicate disease. So talking about where the future is going uh, in regards to your fields or research is so, so important. And again, after reading quite a few papers, doing your research on uh, all of the kind of papers, that'll really give you a good understanding of where the future is in this field. And I'm sure that every single paper will talk about one or two things in regards to where the future is going. So don't worry too much about the conclusion. What I would say is that write your introduction first, then your main body, and then after doing all the reading and research behind this, you will then start to get a feel of what the limitations are in the field, uh, what this kind of future is, and where the next steps are taking us in regards to progress this research uh, or title topic further. Once you've done the introduction, the main body, and the conclusion as well, the last part to look at, I would say, is the abstract. Um, so not every single paper will require you to will require you to write an abstract. Uh, sometimes I had to for my essays, and certainly in my publications, I always had to uh, write uh, some sort of abstract. Uh, but for those of you that don't know, uh, what an abstract is, is basically uh, a brief summary of the entire paper from start to finish. So it's um, a brief summary of the introduction, the main body, conclusion, and any findings that you found uh, in your research and in your uh, kind of writing of the essay. Now, as I said, it's not always required, so do check your uh, requirements of your essays. The next thing to note is that the abstract doesn't actually count towards your uh, word count, as well as your references or your figure legends. None of those things normally count towards your word count, so don't worry too much about that. The next thing to note is that when you writing your abstracts they should not be any references so you should not reference at all in your abstract and also um, i would recommend writing your abstract last the reason why is that once you have your introduction written your main body written and your conclusion written then you have a really good understanding of what your entire essay actually includes and then you can go on to writing your abstract in regards to actually going about writing your abstract my advice would be to go through the entire essay once it's actually been written and highlight the key points that you really should uh, talk about in your abstract and then summarize them all together and include this in your actual abstract. This is kind of the best method that I would say in regards to writing your abstract, you know, going through the entire paper, knowing exactly where the main points are and what you should take away from it and then including that into your abstract. And then lastly, one tip I have for you guys when writing your abstract is that the first line should really catch your audience attention and should really, really be important. The reason why is that the function of this abstract is to give, a, as I said, a brief summary of your entire paper so that if it is published, for example, and people go on to read your scientific paper, they're going to start off by actually reading the abstract and deciding in 30 seconds whether or not your uh, paper is applicable for what they want to write about. So having a good first catchy line will be so, so good in regards to capturing your audience uh, straight away and allowing them to then go on to read your paper. All right, guys, so that is pretty much it. I hope it's giving you guys a good understanding of what you should actually include in your own essays when you're actually writing it. As I mentioned, if you guys want an actual example of my own essay and exactly how how I wrote it step by step, including all of the figures, the tables, the abstracts, references, absolutely everything, then a link for my ebook on how to write an essay will be down below. If you guys have any questions at all on, uh, on what I've just spoke about or how to write an essay in general, then please leave me a comment down below. And make sure you're subscribed, make sure you're liked, follow me on Instagram as well, and I'll see you guys on the next one.